So welcome back to Getting Artsy Layouts 2. Another new product that I have released this week is called my Artsy Play Cards. Artsy Play Cards, which I didn't know what else to call them, is basically the way I scrap. I don't scrap with traditional elements and things. I like to blend things. I use a lot of brushwork and I create these in many different sizes from small little cards, say 4x6, six, 6x6, six, 8x8, six eight eight, all the way up to the 12x12. 12 12. I even have some 24x24 24 24 canvas ones that I've done this one, this with. So I've made these this time in 6x6 six six to try to make it simpler for people. And as you see, I've labeled each layer exactly what it is so you could easily find it in here and you could change things. You could add a photo on top of here and I'll just do that real quick here. I'll add a new layer. Actually, I didn't even need to add a new layer. I'm just going to add a shape and it's a gray shape. And say I did some journaling here and I could add a photo right here if I wanted to. It would be very, very easy add a title call it done for a 6x6 six six layout. But what I use them for is I take all of these and I usually group them together. PSE would have a hard time grouping. It's just easier for me in CS. And I would drag them into a layout 12x12 12 12 with a solid colored paper background or something. And I might arrange this one say up here. And then I would rename my group artsy card. And actually I spell the kits the phonic way just to be different. And if I turned on a textured background paper I could have that there. And then I could like I said add the photo, put the title work, lots of nice white space that you could have around here to do things with, things like that. Another really good thing about these artsy cards with all the layers that they have in them is that you could change the color. So say I didn't want the green. Say I wanted something more of, where's a nice yellowish, I'll just pick this one here for now. So I have yellow in my foreground color and that's the color I want. If I had a photo in here, maybe I'd want to match that with the eyedropper. Real sweet and easy. Shift F5. Says my foreground color, says preserve transparency and I click OK. Now that green brushwork is yellow. I don't particularly care for it with the, with the blue, but it could have some things that go with it. So you could do that with any color and it's going to preserve, I'll do it again, Shift F5, it's going to preserve that translucent see-through brushwork type of thing here. So you are still going to get that. You could also do another way some people prefer to do image adjustments and replace color. So I could take this, pull the green, say OK, change the color, and maybe I want to bring it to a yellower color, something up in this area. Let's take it more yellow even. You know, you can change it this way also. I don't like to do things like that because to me it's kind of haphazard. You're never sure what quite color you're going to get out of that. I prefer the F5. Another thing you can do with these layers is you can click right up here where it says lock. You can lock transparent pixels. And if I do that and I change my color, say I want more blue, and I go and I find one of those gorgeous CU brushes which I just adore and we'll find a good one here that'll work nice, has a little texture in it. And as I stamp down, it's going to only paint on where that green was right here. So you can see how that's blending in beautiful. I can also change the blend mode. Say I want to do a color burn with that. I can come in and it can get some really nice effects like that. So that's what you can do with any kind of element that is a brush or you know a transparent type thing like this so there's a couple different ways for you to do that and we'll just go back in history here I'll go all the way back to the move so that's the original that we started out with 
Another thing you can do utilizing these on a full layout, if you still want a little artsiness left in it, pull one of those blenders out. Now you have this blender behind here. You can change the opacity just so it's a soft light. I could go into my artsy card and actually put a shadow here on this. Let's just pick this one. And I could adjust that blender however much I really want to see it through with the opacity. If I had layer styles on here, I would use my fill. You could also change the blend mode in here. And this is where you get to play a little bit. Now this is a white background, so it's not going to change too much. But there's a linear burn, and it made it a little darker. Color burn just really, really blends it in, but you're seeing just a touch of the colors. And those are a little bit too harsh of a value for me, but it could be done. Of course, you could change it to an overlay, and you're getting hints of that brushwork back in here because it's a white background paper. Now, if it was a different color, we'll go pull one of our solid colors down here to be underneath that blender, and we'll turn it on. And if I change and get rid of all these layer styles, there's how that blender would look just alone. But like I said, you could change the opacity of it give it a total different look that way. You could take it and you could do a soft light with it. Nice, totally different effect. Any of these blend modes. Let's see what linear light looks like. Totally loud, and this is probably out of gamut. You probably will not get this to print right. And, little tip, if you ever want to check that to see how your printing is going to go, you can go up here to your view menu and turn on your gamut warning. And now you can see where all this gray came in. It's because this linear light layer, this is going to show you things they are not going to print with all printers. And it's usually the lesser quality printers that use CMYK. They're not going to print as you see it. So you would want to put that back to normal. And as you see, all that gray disappeared. There is no gamut warning in the original file. So what else could we do? We could just use this again of course clip it to the blender and there's that type of look very 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 diversified you can do many many different things and this artsy card you're not stuck leaving it there what if you didn't want that card there but you want to use the elements you could just pull this this would probably look best down in a corner the way I created it you could pull these items anywhere you want and you could layer them up and over. You can rotate them. You could pull them on another layout. You can change the way they look with opacity and blending also. It's all about play. Play, 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 play. I'm always saying that. You can change their... My right and left mouse keep getting confused. Time for a new mouse. You can take things and change the way they are, the, their sort order in the layers panel. What else could we pull from here? And I'm just going to cheat and pull. So you could do all different kinds of things with these artsy cards by pulling things out of it and using them wherever else you would like to on your layout. And because they're named the way they are, doodle is a doodle. In fact, I have a couple doodles here, but you could take that doodle and you could move it also wherever you would like to. You could double it up if it's not dark enough and make it slightly a little bit darker. You could take this card and totally remove it from the picture if you didn't want to use it. S the splatter that's in here, maybe you want to splatter here. Maybe you want to duplicate it and rotate it and you want lots of different splatter in different places like that your imagination is truly only the limit. Now the texture ones, they're going to add texture to things. So you can see how this is moving around here. But if I put it over here and zoom in a little bit for you, you're going to see there's actually a gesso texture coming in here. And this is, go back down to 60 to 70 percent. That's how you're going to see it when it prints. It's going to be just like that. Because this has a line, I want it to line up there. But this is that journal transfer layer. I could easily just clip it so I don't have to worry about it going outside of that journal spot. 
So you could do that too with the texture in some of these things. Like I said, your imagination is the only thing that's going to stop you and is going to prohibit you from thinking of new things you can do with this. Rotate things around, move them around. Maybe I want this texture over here and I want it on top of that green to give a total different effect. Maybe I don't want it outside, so I'm going to clip it so that it only appears on this part of this element. Again, unlimited things you can do with this. And all you have to do is play. And that will start showing you the different things that you can come up with and ideas and rearranging. So depending upon what type of photo you have or arrangement, you know, you could easily add a couple of photos here or a cluster of frames with photos. Add your journaling, just have this little artsiness in the corner here and rearrange your things that are from your artsy card to now be used in here. And they're blended and they should, you know, blend in nicely with things you put them under and over and depending upon which one it is, is things you can do with it. So I hope that gave you a little bit of insight and I am sure I will be showing more of these on some future technique tutorials.